Well, hey there, and welcome to Home Alive. Thanks for joining with us today. I hope you are doing well. It is Thursday, and that can only mean one thing, that we are joined with Olek Publishing Manager today. Really excited to see what he's got lined up for us. A bit of housekeeping from me just before we go any further. If you haven't headed on over to the Discord, be sure to do so. You can join there, and in there you will find a link to my calendar where I am here to help you out one-on-one -on -one for the jam so if you want to get some advice or some help with your game or just to get some fresh ideas or someone to look over it come and join me for a 15 minute slot and we'll talk about your game and see if we can make any improvements or maybe get you unstuck so that's about it the other thing i want to say today um if by any chance you're not entered into the jam shame on you to start with but if you're not we are going to be pasting a link in the Discord for today only if you want to join late. So we've got two weeks left of the jam. So if you did want to come in, we've had a lot of DMs um, and letting people in low, low key. So for one day, if you're not entered in the jam, you can come and follow a link that will be uh, ready just for one day today. And that will be your last chance to enter full stop. So if you haven't done so, do that already. That will be on the Discord very shortly. But without further ado... I am going to welcome on our guest today, Olek, and uh, say hello. So what is up? Hello, guys. My name is Olek. I'm a publishing manager here at Hammer Games, and my job is to deconstruct games and help studio do better games, basically. And this is why we're here today. I'm going to share one of the examples, and uh, super excited to have you here, guys. Cool. Yeah. So, Olek, how long have you been at Homer now? It's been two years now, and a uh, very excited journey, multiple published games, and uh, I'm sure more to go. Yeah, and what's, and what's great about the publishing team and all you guys there is that one thing that we always like to stress, because it's, I, I find it really fascinating, is that the fact that you're, you used to call them squads, I'm not sure if you still do, but you're only allowed a certain amount of studios that you can look after at any one time. And I think that's really powerful because it gives you so much more time to dedicate to the studios that you work with. Do you? What's the best thing that you that you enjoy about being a publishing manager? Would you say? I think the best thing, first thing, the publishing team that we are super complementary to each other, and like uh, every publishing manager has kind of unique skills that let him does his job a bit differently. Uh, myself, I'm coming from finance and data science, so I. Uh, don't have a huge gaming background, 10 years of gaming. And, uh, but we, on the contrary, have people who do so. And uh, really working with Homa, I think you can have a unique experience working with every publishing manager. And yeah, indeed, we don't work with that many studios. Each of them, uh, each of publishing managers has around 10 max, which allows you to really kind of bind with publishing manager at the same time, uh, get more experience, more attention, more feedbacks and... Uh, um, I think increases your chances to publish. Yeah, I agree. And what's really cool, and if um, I always like to say this as well, is that every week all the publishing managers get on a Google Meet together and everybody gives input on everyone's game. So not only do you get your own dedicated publishing manager, which is awesome, that actually has time to talk with you and help you, everybody gets a say on the games and gives their input to each other's games and i think it's so powerful and uh yeah just wanted to point that out because i don't think many people know that and i want to keep reiterating yes. how, how good especially it is. if it's something promising if you get something promising yeah you could be sure that it won't be missed it won't be lost somewhere on our dashboard and yeah like uh, probably the whole publishing team will see it and give his uh like opinion and personal input yeah, it's great because we, we look at the videos and then everybody's hand starts going up, going, what about this, what about that, what about this? And it all gets written down and gets taken on board and it's a really, really great system we've got here. So listen, I know you've got a presentation for us lined up today. I'm eager to look at this one. So I'm going to hand over to you. I'm going to have a look at your presentation and then we'll, uh, we'll come back on and have a chat. Sound cool? Perfect. Yeah, Kevin. Let's go. All right, guys. So today we're going to talk at one of the games, uh, which is not published by Homer, but still a very, very good example of simulation games and how to do simulation games. A lot to learn from it. So I'm going to start uh, with this slide and the uh, overview of presentation overall. We're going to talk about uh, concept, where it came from, and the key figures. Uh, at the same time, why is it great? And uh, is there something else to do about airport? 
and then we're going to dig into the game his, itself, starting with the core loop and uh, even even uh, some feature on the monetization. So for the context, it's the game is done by Quali. Uh, it's uh, the internal prod team, so fully developed uh, in their house. And it was the uh, first version was on the store in, in uh, October, and it actually took them around four months to scale. Uh, to start scaling, I would say. Uh, and uh, it's interesting because for a usual pipeline, I would say it's around, uh, uh, we do three sprints, uh, three iterations. So usually you can get your game out of the store in three weeks to the top charts, the beauty of Happy Casual. But uh, not the same case for simulation games and not the same games for this game in particular. And if you look in the update pipeline on uh, Sensor, you will see that there were around eight before eight and heavily content updates before they were able to to start buying uh, start buying users for the game and uh, so as i said it's a simulation game which is quite well represented in the top charts we see there are 15 percent of uh, games in simula in uh, the top charts are simulation games which is a like a decent chart of the total downloads of uh, of the happy casual but uh, when we look at the bottom store in terms of how many games are released by the developers like you every day on the store, they only represent 5% of uh, overall releases, while runners are dominating like crazy with 48, but only 32% in the top charts. So we want to look at the simulation games because uh, there are many caveats, there are many uh, reasons why this is the case, but at the same time, you can be sure that if you are firstly capable and if you are executed right with the right team with the right uh, publisher as well you'll be able to 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 reach success in it so starting with the thematic of the game yeah it's uh, the game about airport pure simulation huh? uh, everything that you can uh, meet in the airport when you are there uh, from including from uh, people touching you trying to find some hidden objects on your body uh, ending up with uh, interrogating in the room. I hope not for you, but uh, maybe for, for some people, yes. And uh, there are multiple games already released, pure, also pure sim HC simulations, including the one with the uh, Say games, where they uh, just loop mini games, mini game after mini game, without, like, I would say, with less of a story comparatively to airport security. And there was one uh, by Homa Games, uh, Border Patrol. Uh, also quite successful release, uh, a very old one, uh, like more than two years ago. And uh, I'm sure there are like uh, more to come. And why? Because first in the airport, there is tons of give fine situations. Myself uh, had a couple of prototypes which were getting uh, decent CPIs based on this thematic. And uh, also why is there are tons of casual games on this story if you're just going to story like, uh, Google uh, AirPod, uh, App Store, <laughs> AirPod, you will uh, see that uh, yeah, there are many uh, uh, flight management games. There is one from Azure where you would uh, build your AirPod uh, flight line, flight zones in between the, and develop them in the, for, the, for the whole world. And I'm sure there will be a couple of uh, more to come in top charts, uh, maybe strategy, maybe Idle Arcade, looking forward for Idle Arcade um, in the AirPod. Uh, going further, we start with uh, digging a bit into the core loop of, uh, of uh, airport security. The, as we know, I mean, majority of you who worked at least once in simulation games, they would know that the uh, biggest problem of these games is content. And uh, uh, firstly, in terms of developing, developing the new content, but secondly, also in terms of how to retain a user, how to make them play more and more, as soon as the user exhausts the content, they are less likely to replay the same mini game, even if it's a small, um, even if it's a, even if it's a slightly different. And here they went with the day-based kind of approach. It's, uh, it's I mean, it's, it's rather classic. We've seen games like that where the the levels are kind of uh, split into days because you first you get. Uh, uh, IS placement in between every mini game, which is uh, kind of naturally blended into it, comparatively to you want to you wait to finish the whole level. So as you see, day one it consists of uh, three mini games. I think first time I played this game, it was two mini games. Uh, so they uh, 
they a bit tested it and uh, seems like yeah, directly starting with three mini games is uh, is uh, working the best. And then you got uh, many mini, like a couple, I would say, uh, as far as I remember, it's around seven or eight mini games, uh, with completely different scenarios, completely different mechanics. But the interesting case is that the interrogation mini game, where you where a person sits in front of you, and just uh, you just have a conversation with him, choosing uh, answers uh, uh, one one after another, is the most frequently represented. And it's actually why is I think it's the least churn inducing. Inducing. We I worked myself on a couple of games like that, and on. Uh, uh, if if into one of the mini in between one of the mini games you insert this interrogation uh, mini game people churn the list and this one is the uh, the the one where you can scale up the conflict because why you just uh, the scene is simple you just have someone in front of you and uh, you have these placeholders for 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 answers and you just uh, very quickly you can build uh, one thousand questions one thousand answers. Of course, they have to, to follow kind of the storyline. And uh, for me, they have to be funny. The, the best thing about simulation games, that the, the, those of them that were scaled and they worked very well, they kind of funny. And um, also thinking now about Crazy Love's game, about uh, the judge. Uh, the, same, the same thing, the interrogation mini game is the one that was present. So this would be my first recommendation for you if you work on simulation game. Don't hesitate to insert uh, something like that where you would talk with a with a character in front of you on the screen, and uh, and yeah, has to follow a storyline, has to be funny and uh, uh, easily scalable. Then uh, the second interesting thing is that uh, they have a meta. I mean, this is one of the one of the drivers of uh, long term RV placements and uh, could be a driver of uh, playtime and retention. I think uh, heavily depends on meta. In this case, in, the, in case of Fireport security, you only basically have visual upgrades. You, have, uh, you can uh, make something more pretty. It's not related to a gameplay, like, uh, uh, which we already see is evolving into a casual. Uh, in the runners, uh, meta is uh, becoming related to the gameplay when you unlock something in the meta. You can afterwards interact with it in a runner or uh, in uh, in whatever is the core loop of your of your game. So here it's not the case. Just visual upgrades, it's still good because uh, uh, we can uh, we can easily have some long term RVs. And this, for instance, was the case of uh, Run Rich, where you were just uh, the, the one who might be the first who plugged the of 3d meta with the upgrades of your room into into the um, into the runner and then uh, yeah it's available as a side button after level one again uh, as when i played it first uh, i think they were forcing the users to go into the meta after uh, after fully day one so here i say level one it's actually mini game one so directly after the first mini game you can go into the meta before it didn't used to be like that so it seems like uh, Seems like uh, yeah, again the successful beta's were introducing meta earlier, giving the player show the player that there is something to do long term is working better. And then uh, second point of this slide is about RVs. Uh, you all know what kind of RVs we can uh, put into the game, but simulation games they're interesting in the way that the embedded RVs are usually performing the best. They are again uh, heavily dependent, but uh, heavily sorry, heavily content dependent. That you have to make something specifically, not just a skin, not just a splash screen upgrade, whatever. But you have to design a situation in a specific scenario. What happens if users click on the RB button? And here uh, you see it's one of the examples. They have multiple, but uh, uh, during one of the mini games where you uh, have to palpate the people, you have to search whether. The person has something on his body. Uh, there is a, like a heavily, a dangerously looking guy arriving, grabbing her by the by the head, and uh, you have a timer of like five seconds to watch the RV to send security. Uh, 
usually it provokes emotions, so people are more likely to click on it, and I'm sure they have the high, the high conversion of, out of this mini game after this RV. I use something like that in Tape Rover, actually. In uh, one of the situations, you just have a shooter where in one of the situation, camera turns right, and you also have a limited guy, a limited timer to to watch an RV, and then you can save a girl from uh, some dangerous looking guys. And yeah, this one uh, has higher conversion than a classic skin RVs. So yeah, don't hesitate to to make something unexpected for the users because he's uh, more likely to to watch an RV uh, video for it rather than uh, rather than uh, as a skin. And uh, what makes this game great is uh, art style. And again. Uh, Kudos to them because they worked heavily. You know, the left, uh, the left GIF is actually also their game, but uh, early stage. So I found this creative on the Sensor Tower, but the, this is the one they started to scale with. And you see the core gameplay is exactly the same, but uh, you have some, and the character style is again the same. So it's just a female and male characters, but uh, what they made different, and I'm sure they. Uh, and now these top cre uh, right creatives are the top ones on which they continue to scale. And what you see on the left is that uh, the character actually has kind of no animations. I mean, he has an idle standing animation, you know, just in shaking. But uh, he's not turning his hand. He's not like uh, having the panic in the uh, mouse and the uh, sweat coming all over all over his body. Also, he's a bit further by. So this is like one of the keys to to successful uh, simulation is that it has to provoke emotion. Like already on the left one, uh, you could get interesting metrics because the, the, um, you have that uh, conversation with the character and the, uh, the mechanics is, uh, is interesting that you have to highlight the wrong information on the, on the passport of the person. But the right one is way better. It's uh, way more attractive on the ads. It's, uh, uh, you kind of almost associate with the person. You you feel uh, you feel that he, she's panicking, and uh, you that you really her life is in your hands. Uh. That's uh, the power play is something that's uh, working very well in uh, simulation games because uh, everyone wants to feel in power, and everyone wants to. And give these type of games they allow you to do so. That's why we have a judge, a police, prison. Uh, we have Guilty also at home. Uh, we have quite some games where, uh, where users are, are given the power and the control of the character on the screen. Uh, the key is in the middle, emotion. And uh, I think this game, the, the, the further iterations of this game on the right, they did it very well. And the uh, final slide is why this game is uh, that it's a perfect execution again, as I said, of simulation game. We have uh, a relatable topic, AirPods. Uh, everyone travels, everyone been in the AirPod. Multiple hit games about uh, AirPod thematic didn't uh, prevent a uh, new one. Again, uh, we have a Home of Body Patrol published two years ago, and uh, we have a quality game uh, two years later. Why? It's because the topic is extremely relatable, and for simulation games, it's uh, not a, not a red flag if you have uh, something published uh, on the same topic. Take food, which is uh, probably the, the the whale, the mastodont of a topic for simulation games, and there are multiple histories: the cook, sushi, blended, whatever. Everything related to food uh, was uh, was simulated. And uh, the second one is uh, extremely important, is funny to watch. Funny to watch, I mean, both in terms of the creatives, especially for the marketability. Uh, usually the emotion that you are looking for when a person is looking on the videos is, uh, is love. And that's why all the take nail salon and the creative uh, is not, but it's usually not about perfectly executing your, your actions, like a makeup, let's say. It's not about perfect uh, perfect makeup on the girl, but it's, exact, it's it's about spoiling something. It's about like putting the stick into her eye. So, I mean, not violently, just uh, funny. 
and uh, obviously it works the best because uh, it's funny to watch. That's what we look for. That's what uh, TikTok users are looking for when they scroll their feed. Same with Facebook. And that's why uh, you can catch the attention with what so I put a little key close to that because uh, that's exactly what you have to have in mind when developing simulation games. Is someone gonna laugh when watch this when watching this video? If yes, then uh, then you can understand the chance. If no, then uh, in my opinion, you can still get low CPI if it's extremely satisfying. We take some video of. Uh, TikTok and we just make a simulation game out of it where it looks like extremely satisfying, like uh, like a soap cut, you know. Uh, uh, otherwise, yeah, has to be has to be there. And uh, re again, relatable topic. I'm sure there are there gonna be more games about iPod uh, in different genres. Maybe not pure simulations anymore since since uh, uh, since many stuff was already used, unless you find something that. Uh, that's innovative and uh, the last point is that actually I think uh, I think we're gonna mention it with Kevin and it was uh, inspired from the steam game which is uh, uh, which is one of the ways how you can uh, search for new inspirations and new references for your happy casual games definitely steam is a big source of information and uh, a way for you to, to find your next hit all right, back to you, Kevin. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. I've just got a frog in my throat as I come back in. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, that was great. And I think what we'll do, we'll go back and over the, some of those slides because you packed a lot in there. And I, I, I really appreciate the work you put into doing that. There's some really um, epic points. And I think the last bit from the Steam inspiration fits really well for this jam is taking things from the past. But Aside from that, it's kind of like we... Could you go back to your first slide for us, please? Because you gave the three examples from um, from the games. Uh... This one again? I can't hear you, Kevin. Yeah, I know. Sorry about that. <laughs> I always press that wrong button. Um, yeah, if you could go back to the previous slide, that would be great. It was just, I wanted to touch on, uh, because we've got the Homer game, uh, Border Patrol, and we've got uh -huh. uh, that one. Sorry, yeah, I thought it was uh, further along. So we've got Border Patrol, obviously published by uh, Homer, and then you've got Airport Security. And I'm, I'm, I want to say there was at least 18 months between those two releases, or something along that time. So when we're thinking about Blast from the Past, Airport Security is actually a reboot of Border Patrol, but they added uh, more more of a simulation twist to it. And I think that's really important to remember. And I think Arthur touched on this as well when we spoke earlier, that we have said, you know, be inspired from the games from the past. But because how fast the mobile landscape moves, you know, two years is quite actually a long time in mobile. So... There are games that were relatively recent in 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 human years um, that could be have a, a new uh, lease of life, I think, and that's kind of what I wanted to say. So, so I, even even though Border Patrol was only two years old, the reboot still did really well for Kowale. Um, for sure, I, and I think what they did well also that they uh, uh, they changed the art style. And uh, back in the days, uh, 2020, I think it was. Uh, Something like April 2020, where the these uh, relatable characters, there was no high heels, there was no uh, hair, hair challenge, there was no all these uh, girly style games, and majority of the games they were cartoonish kind of with the less relatable characters. You know, in Border Patrol, they kind of like not almost square, but they are they are way less humanoids than we see in uh, in uh, airport security. That's what they did well. They uh, they changed the art style. They made it more trendy, I would say, more up to the point, which uh, which worked good for them. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I was trying to define the art style they use. It's a kind of it's like cartoony paper, cartoony. It's really weird to me. Uh, it's not one that I massively enjoy, but obviously it works really well for 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 them on this one. And I think what the, if we could go back to the slide where you talked about the content and the rewarded videos, I thought that was a really good one as well because. Essentially, um, what happens 
uh, on the meta, oh, meta and RVs, yeah. So what I really liked about this and what you said is that when we first saw the meta coming in more heavily, it was kind of plugged on, plugged in and didn't really have any relevance. And now we're really seeing that it has, has way more impact of the game in inside the game. So I wanted to touch on the on the meta thing, and it's not necessarily that relevant to the jam and the stuff we're doing, but generally speaking, if you're adding meta, it's way better if it has a bit more meaning. Um, you mentioned there's a lot more meta coming in runners. Is there anything that you you see where the meta is going and any rules we should be following in terms of, of that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's a good topic because I just published two runners this quarter and uh, a few months ago was uh, Shoes Evolution, which has actually meta into it. And the one, the other one is Monster Egg, which doesn't have any meta yet. And uh, we think to, I mean, we are probably going to, to add a bigger meta where you would uh, have a meaningful interaction with it, meaningful unlock something at least like in Shoes Evolution because what happens is I think that uh, users, they uh, switch their behavior as they play more of the game. So day one, uh, their uh, 1000 seconds towards the playtime of their game, they are likely to spend in the runner. They are likely to, to interact with their core loop. But after level 15, 20, it's, uh, it's difficult to, to bring something new every level. Even if you do, it's less impactful if you have, I don't know, like one uh, trampoline or one uh, one, uh, I don't know, even change of mechanic, balancing, whatever. I think uh, they, they start playing more and more meta on day two, day three, day seven, and a bit less with the runner. So I think, uh, like, based on the data we saw, it's like on D0, they are more likely to interact with the, with the runner. And then as soon as they become hooked on the meta, they become uh, unlocking stuff into it. They become uh, collect, uh, they, become, they start to have enough money an excess of money, which you don't spend in the shop, you go into meta and you unlock uh, one, one or two things in it. And uh, as on, as, as the more you pay, play the game, day seven, you you watch more, you are likely to watch more RVs and you are likely to spend more time in the meta. Yeah, it kind of hooks you into the whole overall concept and it pulls you in and like you really want to up, upgrade it. And I think you're right. I mean, for me personally, the meta is way more impactful than skins. I mean, it, the skins do well, of course, but if you've got something that you're building up and you can progress, it makes it way more almost touching on the hybrid stuff now, really, when, you know, the, the snackable, we've got the snackable gameplay, but you, we're bolting on an actual uh, a game onto that. And I think it's really interesting. And you mentioned the the, um, the the latest shoe runner that you've done that's doing really well right now. And I love the uh, uh, you've got like a, a trophy room type thing that you build up yeah. in there where you're collecting them. And I think that's that's really powerful. So um, the just other want to make sure like your 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 gameplay has to be interesting enough itself because the meta it doesn't bring actual retention. Maybe it can bring like two or three percent, but uh, what it does instead it uh, helps retain the users that are already engaged with your current gameplay. So those they that would stay anyways, like let's say uh, you will have 10 versus D7, and those you will be able to monetize them better because they 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 will more they will watch more RVs and you will just have high LTVs on uh, on the users that you already engaged with your gameplay. So it's not actually a solution uh, if someone think so to just put the meta and uh, and fix the, the in-game retention yeah, yeah that's so. a great point uh, and thanks for pointing that out because i think that's important it's just like it's for the people who are really invested in your game you're giving them the content to stick around and obviously uh have a longer uh, better ltv because you've already purchased the we've already got the users now we just monetize them more and keeping them longer and i think that's really cool um i'm going to flick back to that other side because i really like the idea of uh, having the rewarded videos that you mentioned there and the fact that yes you can have rewarded videos for unlocking skins um, as we all know or, or environments maybe but the what we saw in this one was the fact that they gave us almost like a bonusy type level where it's additional content to play uh, for watching the video. And we see this a fair amount. And I think you made the point that it needs to be like, give the players a reason to press that rewarded video. You want them to like have to press that button because they want to play. Um, and I think it's a really important point there that the, the send security one, it's kind of super fun. 
um, and not it's not dry or dull, but it's additional content. Um, these games are content heavy. Sure, the mini games. What do you think? And you mentioned humour quite a bit. Is there anything that you can recommend that? How can I ask this question? I want to be able to say what is a good tip for people who are thinking about the monetization and adding these sort of things in. What could be? Is it is it important to keep to the theme, but add something, add something like? God damn it! I don't know how to say it. It's kind of like, do you need to keep into the theme, or can you add? Does okay. it really matter what you add? I mean, we've seen examples of the contrary. We've seen a couple of games. I mean, not actually a couple. There was a big trend uh, back in the days where you uh, you would find your one creative, uh, and uh, it has say ten cents CPI, and uh, but impossible to to care, to keep the people. Uh, just based on your core loop. So there were publishers uh, in uh, Good Job Games with the House Life 3D, which was basically a bunch of simulation game, uh, one after another, different mechanics, and uh, very, very like yes, yes, yes level, yes, yes, and uh, bumping players a lot uh, with interstitials. I think what they do essentially is that they don't have a, a very good uh, G1 and D7 retention, but still, I mean, uh, the, the business, the business model is to have a margin on the game. And if you can have a margin on the game, buying on D1 profitability, I mean, you're free to do so and you're free to, to scale a game if it uh, has the same, uh, the same uh, margin. The only difference is that uh, your CPI is going to rise on the scale and you, you might uh, very quickly burn through your 10 cent CPI ending up with 20, but you don't have a enough retention to 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 work on LTVs. So I think it's way better to do something in the theme, to do something story based. You have a storyline and you guide the player through it. Even like uh, Voodoo Pranks, the game that I worked on, we, that's what we tried to do. We tried to have, you know, like a girl that uh, was cheated by his boyfriend and then you go through levels trying to revenge him using the Voodoo doll. So this is like the way to go, I would say, is to engage users into the story, into the narrative. And uh, then, yeah, the, the only question is uh, content and, uh, and interesting, uh, interesting interactions with the game. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So it can work, but you'll, you'll get way better results if you can weave it into the theme of your game. And it kind of makes sense in a way. Um, I want to answer a quick question here from Matrix, who said, we've been working on some prototypes aside from the jam and wondering if we can get a contract or else after a contract or, or can we show can we show our prototype? So I'll just quickly answer that. Um, be sure to reach out to me personally over on the Discord and we can definitely have a conversation about that. Um, and that's really, um, really that that's the answer, Matrix. I hope that's helpful. Um, Alec, can we just go to one more slide? Um, and it was the one where, um, what was it? Oh my goodness, can you just flick through your slides for me? I can't, completely lost my place when, um, uh, the art style, that's it, perfect, thank you. So, uh, what I wanted to pick up on this one was, um, and you said you pulled this left-hand one from Sense Tower, which was an old version of the game, and the one on the right was the one that they ended up... Um, scaling now i think one thing i really wanted to mention here and you said you know they changed the art style they add the juiciness of the sweat coming off and really pulled out the emotion that she she's really worried um and i think that's really important but the other thing that i noticed uh, straight away is that down the bottom there on the left one they got this small sort of marker pen red and green buttons or uh, to, to select the colors to cross out the things on the on the passport but look at the difference on the right hand side one with those really big buttons down the bottom and i think that makes it so much clearer um yeah, exactly. that they're doing it there, and then right? on the left side it's even difficult to understand what the game is about like exactly um, you understand what it's about but you don't understand what's the final goal yeah, exactly. And I think it's really it's really great seeing them side by side because it's the same stuff, 
just present it differently and add in what we we know that works well, making it super simple to understand and, um, you know, just hyper casualing it up with the, uh, I love the sweat coming off there. I think it's really fun. Um, and I, and one last thing before we move on is that the fun part, and you said humor a little bit, and you had that slide where, um, where it broke up every five levels or so with um, the text and, and all of that stuff. And introducing humor is a, is like a really good, um, a really good sort of way to engage people. And I think that's a really important point because um, adding humor, you know, people are on their phones to be entertained. And if something can make you laugh, it, you immediately warm to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think. Well, I have to say, actually, I laughed a couple of times playing this game. I mean, especially yeah. in expected situations like Arvizia. I mean, I think we'll play it right. So we'll, we'll see. A couple. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to fire up the game yeah. in just a moment. But yeah, even the example you get, I mean, uh, you gave on your slide, it's just like. Uh, it's kind of wacky and out there, but you 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 got to be pretty stone faced not to at least get a little bit of a grin because it's just kind of funny and stupid. And I think that's one thing we always need to remember. Like we're trying to Helps give you a little... tolerate every twenty seconds of uh, interstitials, really. You right, know, exactly. Yeah, it's got to be worth it. But we want we want to create smiles. We want it to be fun. Um, and yeah, that's something to uh, keep in mind. Uh, the icons help for red and green bright. The icons help for red, green, color blindness as well, says Ryan. Okay, cool. All right, and Matrix, you're welcome. Hit me up, and we'll try and uh, we'll book a book a time in. So what we're going to do now? I thought, as uh, as Alex said right at the end there, he uh, mentioned it came inspired from Papers Please, and we've got the trailer lined up for you now. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to play through it. We turn the sound down because it's a it's kind of a horrendous soundtrack, if I'm honest. Um, but what we can do here is have a quick look at, this is a real-life example from a very old Steam game that was inspired to make Border Patrol and that, even if they didn't realise it. Um, before I press that button, Joseph is asking, how much time needed to get approved or rejected? So, Joseph, on that one... Um, we will be looking at all the entries coming in now. Uh, we will start testing shortly. Um, we've just had some internal things we had to figure out here, but we're going to be starting the test soon, and we're going to be looking at all of this, and then make sure you've got all your ticks in your submission, and we'll be looking at everything shortly. If you've got any problems, once again, head on over to the Discord. There is a link in the description, and uh, we'll try and help you out there. So bear with us why whilst we get through all of that. All right, so I'm gonna press the button here, and it's kind of a weird one, really. And this is a great example, I think, of where the concept is here, but the you couldn't get a starker difference in execution. So this is Papers, Please. The video is running from the Steam Trainer, and you can see here it's a passport um, checking game. Um, and there's various different parts of this, and if they sneak through, they can go and blow something up or something. Um, so, yeah, don't always... It doesn't have to be a carbon copy of the gameplay. You can look at the concept to think, right, so this game is a passport, and look what happened to a Border Patrol, which was awesome by us, and, of course, Airport Security. So it was worth mm. mentioning here... Oh, okay, Jason. Nice. So Jason's saying he's got the theme song playing in his head when he, uh, when he, uh, when he, when he sees this. Even though we've turned the volume off. So yeah, the game's cool. It's a very, it's one of these games that's really unusually and kind of weirdly good. But you can see here, there's all sorts of checks going on. It goes a little deeper in the meta, but you can see you could easily turn some of that into the mini games that we saw um, in 2022. So I think it was worth putting mm -hmm. this up there. Um, so as Oleg rightly said, check out Steam. It's such a good source of inspiration. Um, and even if you can see through some of the gameplay that might not fit in today's market, what is the idea behind the game? And like, oh, okay, maybe you can hyper-casualize that, okay? Uh, so I wanted to mention that, and good to see you here on the stream. If you've got any questions, do get them in. Uh, we have Oleg, we have his time. I have stolen him, so be sure to get your questions in. If there's anything you want to ask, now is the time. Let us know if you're building anything simulation-wise and all that good stuff. All right, so we're going to, as uh, Alex said, we are going to launch Airport Security. 
Uh, we normally turn the Wi-Fi off, but we can't turn it off today because uh, it's Kuali. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get spammed a little bit on the ads. Um, hopefully it's going to load up for us here. Um, Actually, because uh, frequently it's also a source to see new games, you know, that have just started to buy users because they uh, usually start with high SPFs. So they have, they're higher in the, in the waterfall and like you are more likely playing new games to also get ads of new games. So you yeah, can that's discover, a great... you know, some games that start to scale. Perfect. So yeah, that's a great point. So what what we're saying is like we're Oleg saying that when the uh, when people are trying to scale up and advertising new games to see how the CPI is going and they're advertising on these networks, we're going to get the newer games here if they're bidding high enough. So we might see some new games that you not come across. So in the uh, in the uh, in the research arena we are today. Uh, so this is a really good start actually. We obviously we've got the banner ad down the bottom there, um, but straight away we've got customize your game which is a, a very interesting way of seeing that. I don't normally, uh, I've not seen it saying customize your game before. I think that's quite neat, if I'm honest. Uh, it's normally like, will you just allow, but um, yeah, I don't care. All right, and we won't track. Um, God, we struggle on that button. Oh my goodness, all right. All right, so straight into the game here, straight into the game here. Uh, we've got a... A pick your character, and interestingly enough, I know I let you were talking about um, like the male female split on your shoe game, and like you want to try and um, you want to try and swing it a little bit more female, or try that in your in your sort of uh, your next sort of updates and that. And I think this is a really good way of doing it. It's something I wanted to. I'm not sure if I mentioned it when we spoke last, but I think this is really good that you could actually try something like this and choose the sex. Um, and immediately it feels more customizable. What do you think about yeah, a screen think, like this? Yeah. It's uh, it's been used already. Yeah, I think I remember it in nine one one from Supersonic. I remember it a couple of games. So it's uh, also Prison Life. So it's quite frequent way to use it for simulation games. The difference is that yeah. So here, yeah, everyone uh, it's a good way everyone will associate to their character and stuff. But for shoes, let's say uh, if someone chooses female. At at first, then uh, it's weird that uh, his first choice will impact his whole user experience, his whole game experience. Like, I can't make him only play with female shoes forever because uh, he chose uh, female shoes at the uh, choose female as his character at the beginning. So for for shoes in particular, and for games where it really really makes an impact on the user experience, you have to find the smart way to integrate it. Maybe uh, I know you have like two tracks. You have a UI where you can all the time switch between male and female track and you you know you have a progress okay how much a male track is complete how much female track is complete might be something we do but for simulation games since it doesn't matter you will have exactly the same games exactly the same uh, uh, user experience it's a good way to just make a game a bit more like more relatable for, for yourself yeah. Yeah, fair shout. I didn't actually realise that. So, yeah, I'll shut up. <laughs> I'll shut up on that one. It, was just, it just came to mind when I remember doing it like this. But, yeah, it's not relevant. So, we're going to pick a character. I guess we should go male. We might as well. Oh, we can change. Okay. So, that... Oh, we can... Oh, that's pretty cool. So... Ah, the race. Yeah, that's... I, I was expect. Well, should we go green? We might as well. So, I'm going to go to this green, dude, because yeah. why not? That's a bit mental. Uh, and let's just do that. All right. So, not so the animation there as well. So, you know, these little things are kind of fun and funky they make it feels a little bit more alive a little bit more exciting to play um and straight away we're in here so hi my name is tim cruz so we've had a lot of questions about ip stuff and i think this kind of is a kind of a good example of how you can get around that you know so you can't you couldn't put tom cruise on there that's that's you know sailing a little bit close um, but we've had a lot of questions about the Marvel stuff and, and things like that. So you could have Man Bat that looks rem kind of like Batman, or you could have Spider Man or or whatever. But think of how you can play on words or twist it a little bit. It's not not super close, but you can get away with it. So his name is Tim Cruise, but his passport says Hank Gonzalez. So I'm going to say suspicious, and obviously the game is. Obviously, thinking I'm such a potato. I'm not sure you can clean, click on approve this year anyway. No, I literally can't. I'm tapping on the screen here, so I literally can't do it. So, again, leading us through it, 
so we can't go wrong, which is kind of cool for the first level, right? Um, and this is our highlight button, so nice little onboard in here, really walking us through, showing exactly what we got to do. Just drawing on the yeah, screen. Yeah, you even have like a little trace after the hand. Like yeah, it's nice, nice right? It's that extra polish. So there's no, the idea is here that we, there's no confusion of what we got to do. We make it super, super, super simple. And you can see here that we were talking about earlier with the sweat piling off his, piling off his head. Yeah. I think the difference a bit that you should uh, include is that this is internal pro game. So probably they're still working on it. They are, they are really, really posh polishing it. So usually, yeah. Uh, uh, I would, of course, push uh, everyone external devs also to to work on it. But I realized yeah, that it's a bit easier when you have internal team to to make them the, polish the game. And that's why we also bring on board our internal uh, pro team sometimes to help uh, to help finish the game, to help add this kind of little details uh, to the gameplay, which uh, which have uh, like a short impact uh, on small impact on user experience on his like first. Uh, opinion of the game. So this is something that I think external developers first like don't maybe care about and secondly don't have really time given the scope you have to cover when you're publishing a game. And that's when yeah internal pro tools can also come on board and help you guys. Yeah that's a great point and I'm really uh, really glad you mentioned that. So there are there are teams here at Homer that can help out with all this stuff. So if you're a small team or you're really pushed and you you're struggling to you know, find the resources and the time to put all the things in. You can talk to your publishing manager and there's it's very possible that the internal teams can help you with all this kind of stuff. And of course, guide you as well to ensure you're working on the right thing and your energy is going into the things that are going to make the most impact. So uh, a massive value add again. Hello, RR Pineda. You are new here. What is up? I'm glad you're here. Moon Jump Games. I've been playing with different concepts, but now looking to adapt something I was already working on. Oh, okay, he's really um, replying to Valentine. All right, cool. Moon jump. Can't wait to see what you got. All right, so oh my goodness. All right, so I left it on that screen for the longest time. Sorry about that. All right, so that was our first onboarding, which I thought was pretty good, to be fair. Look, walked us all the way through it without us being able to actually get it wrong. So immediately we're in the game. So again, the yeah, same. It's really by the book. Yeah, the same um, the same uh, game here. So Jackson Moore, Jackson Moore. So we can approve this one. So giving us the fail first, and then giving. Oh my goodness! All right. <laughs> so here we are. Welcome. Um, let's see if I can turn this off. Um, yeah, I mean, I think they have a timer and they have a placement literally after every step. And since we talk, you know, the timer obviously passes. Oh uh, right, so yeah, that's a good point. Us. So for the monetization here, they like uh, I like just said that it's on, it's on like I don't know, typically a 45, 30 second timer where they will automatically show the ads and they will show the ads uh, on the, on the natural break when you complete a level or something. So uh, we know that this is um, suspicious. I mean, this is probably a really terrible game to play live on the stream because it's not massively exciting. But, um, <laughs> I guess we should just run through it a little. Oh, <laughs> now, that was pretty cool. I enjoyed it's that. Cool, cool. So um, again, you know, they could have just came along and first time the um, the dude just sort of handcuffed us, but then they just bundled. Uh, they just bundled her, which I think is really funny. So again, it goes back to what Oleg was saying about make it fun, make it smiley. Um, don't be frightened to add that humor in there. So we'll play for a few little more here. Hopefully you get to a different mini game. And it looks like we've just had a camera yeah. angle change there and a new outfit. So there's the RV or rewarded video for a new skin. What do you think about this? Because I've no idea, because I'm a police officer, right? Why? What's this skin doing for me? I mean, uh, I'm not sure. I'm actually to the green, given that he chose the green first, uh, the green character. So. Right. Yeah, be, so I think if it was green, we might have had the more intention to take it, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just <clears throat> also given it comes after the interstitial directly. Uh, usually, the problem that you have is that if you put uh, RV like that before end of the level and you put interstitial after clicking on no thanks, you a bit cannibalize your, uh, your interstitials because people who watched RV. They, they they will not have an interstitials. Here you have a bit higher CPM over on RVs, 
but in the end you will only have one uh, one ad watched maybe 20 uh, percent will watch rv uh, and the rest of 80 80 percent will watch interstitial so you will only get one 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 ad from a player and here it went you we have it after the interstitial so we can have some small percentage of people i mean it's unlikely that someone watched the interstitial and directly after he will want to watch an rv for that skin so i think maybe the conversion is like four five percent yeah i think it's too aggressive i agree it's like too too much right and i think it's always that balance of trying to get and squeeze in as much as we can but let's not be over greedy about it and make sure your time right. is if, good. And I think the most if people important... don't drop here, if no one will close the game directly on the screen, uh, if well, if one percent close the game, but four percent, uh, basically yeah, you have to be test. It's hard to know yet, yeah, but quite a yeah. And aside from the timing, like I said, I mean, I didn't actually realize this was a skin for me because I'm green. So I think if you're doing this, make sure you know, make make sure it's working properly. Uh, because I'm now bamboozled what this is, and I probably won't choose another outfit uh, ever, just because. But I like, appreciate that we got a bit of camera movement here, and it looks like we're now into a different section of the game. We've got some buttons popped up. We've got a no ads button, which is kind of tempting right now, and we got this upgrade button to. Um, so we might as well click on that. What was really nice is that they didn't show us any of this stuff at the start. Um, there's the timer going on, perfect. Oh, I love this game. This is an old game. Um, the uh, the buttons came up. Go away, Tap Nation. All right. God damn it. Jesus. Right. right so... Oh no. <laughs> All right. I'm just gonna let you run. The point is that the uh, the buttons didn't come up uh, when we first started the game, and I always try and drive this home that we didn't need a no ads button at the start of the game because we never played it we didn't need an upgrade um for the airport because a uh well we still got no money which i think is a bit stupid uh but at least now it's given us showing us a bit more of the game of what we can do i would much rather see that shot when we get some money though so we can go into the shop we get shown the shop and straight away we can go and buy something that pulls us into that upgrading and building thing but this is kind of neat. I like the camera angle. What do you What do you make of this? Is this a good way of doing it? Do you think? Uh, it's a it's a just yeah it's uh, it's above average. Let's say uh, yeah. I think uh, it's uh, still not it's still three D. I mean it's you can't move in it. I think right now I think the next trend would be purely kind of wide arcade meta where you can really have an avatar and move around doing something in it. I think this would be better even for this game, but then you have uh, to have a very, very uh, progressive onboarding. Here we just presented with everything that is available to unlock 3D one. I think it's uh, well, it's good. It's, uh, it's yeah. Good. So this is like the precursor for the arcade idol we see now. It's like they've just given we can move it around, so it's very much a, a linear thing, but we can still do it. Um, and I agree, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? And like I said, though, for me, I think it would have been way more powerful if we'd have got. I mean, I don't know how much this scanner costs. Um, Seven fifty, say. It would have been way better to give us a thousand bucks straight away and get us in and buy something. Then I can have a good look round because I can actually do something. But now I can't do anything, which is a bit annoying. Um, but let's have a couple more goes. Um, the graphics are really nice. So what we got to do here? So we're scanning him. Okay, that's look a bit dodgy. So pat down. So the control systems. Um, Okay, I wasn't expecting this. Oh, you've got, actually got to pat him down. Wait, what? Okay. So I've got to hold my hand, and obviously I can see on the x-ray thing where all the stuffs are. I don't know why I had a banana or a rubber duck under his armpit. Highly suspicious, I would say. So I think we should arrest him for that. But you can see, it's really easy, kind of kiddie and simple, um, but really nicely produced. I think it's the, uh, the overall sort of take away for me. I don't think we should play much more of this because I can't handle the adverts if I'm honest. It's uh it's a bit of an outfest. But get so get some questions in that chat if you want to ask anything while we're here, while I try and triple pop close these damn things. Um but yeah I think it's kind of a, a neat idea. Um yeah. content heavy though, so difficult to build and not not a quick sort of hyper casual type thing wouldn't you say 
So I, there's a load more stuff here. So this is a good mechanic, this one. I can't do it very well, but it's pretty good. Maybe more. There we go. Yeah, Found another ducky. Like small, Got to head out with a great shot. Yeah. No problem, uh, Ryan. Good to see you. Glad you could make it to the stream. And yeah, if you're liking this content, please do uh, hit that like button and let us know. Um, and we will keep doing it. And you can, of course, um, we'll be releasing the Academy soon, which we'll give you links to. Both All right. So. Can't pass this game. Oh, my goodness. Jeez, that's a really old game, that one, isn't it? All right. Okay. Oh, look, I think my patience has run out a little bit on this thing. Um, I'm not listening to that song ever again. That is like the most overplayed song in history, that, that free thing. So, thank you for doing that with me today. Any, what what do you think, um, a man of ads are killing me? Yeah, exactly, uh, Can I agree. So, I think it, the takeaways here is that we can get inspiration from not just really old games, but relatively recent-ish games what do you think why overall and i know you sort of said it already but what's the sort of closing sort of thing like what what was the biggest factor of the success of that game because obviously it did better than the homer one that was released a couple of years before what do you think made that into such like a 40 million download game or whatever it was so I would say that uh, multiple factors. Firstly, uh, they keep working on the game. They keep pushing updates and uh, they, uh, this is a great way to also sustain your game because uh, usually what happens a bit is that uh, uh, developers, they, uh, as soon as the game releases, they basically start pushing updates into it, updates into it, which it doesn't help when you, when you try to sustain the scale and your CPI is rising a bit on the, uh, on the scale, especially if you like buy a non CPI network. So uh, when you start to slow down, it's very, very good to have this uh, LTV uplift on the product side. So I would say don't stop working on the game, especially if it's uh, profitable, if it uh, makes you makes you happy. Uh, keep working, keep improving. That would help the publisher to keep scaling the game, which, which uh, they did. And uh, it's on the other, on the one side. On the second side is a very good topic, very relatable, which uh, I'm quite sure translated in the low CPI on test. Uh, already, like simulation games that uh, tend to get lower CPIs if done properly. And here we have a uh, like very good creative, the, the right one that we looked at together. I think it's a great creative for, for simulation games. Uh, Highlighting everything, giving you a like, kind of a power play of a uh, of uh, the character, so users uh, they feel like okay, I'm gonna make the decision. Uh, like this, uh, this one, like Hello Heaven games, also like successful. This is a topic where you really could uh, uh, make a choice whether you, the character will go into the hell or, or uh, heaven. So deciding his destiny, basically. Uh, here it's also the case. And uh, lastly, I would say great execution. I think the animations, the characters are nicely done. The environment is nicely done. And uh, that even makes you tolerate the ads because, I mean, uh, it's clear that uh, it was heavily be tested, the timers and the placements. And uh, since we have seen so many ads in the game, that's the, the way to bring the, the highest LTV for the player. And... Uh, and since uh, since it happens, this just people are ready to tolerate them, given the content they, they will get, and given the the, the the smile on the first day they will get when playing this type of game. Yeah, that's, that's a great point, and I can I think you smashed it. Yeah, I think it's a mixture of all those things, isn't it? And I think for me overall, I really like the theme of it. I think the theme works particularly well, and like you said gives you that playing God, doesn't it? Or, or being in authority where you're making the decision and you're instantly powerful by the very nature of the game, which I think is really good, which is why the emergency ones work pretty well. Um, and like I said, we did the, the judge one where it's like you've got that, you're, you're making the decisions and, um, and you're controlling people's lives and, and all of that kind of stuff. All right, so we're going to start to wrap that up today. Thanks for joining with me. Um, I just want to say before we go, um, if you've not headed over to the Discord, be sure to do so. 
and book a 15 minute slot with me so I can see your games for the jam. Thanks to everyone who I spoke to uh, this week so far. Um, really great to meet you all as well. Um, and I've got to be honest, your games are pretty damn awesome from what I've seen. So really looking forward to seeing how they progress. So head over to the Discord and uh, be sure to book a slot with me. Um, really hope you're enjoying these. Big thanks to Olek for coming on today. And uh, don't forget tomorrow, thank Olek in that chat right now. You've got 20 seconds. Um, tomorrow uh, we are joined same time with Augustine going over another stream just like this where we we're going to play through the game. So with all that said and done, that is going to go and wrap it up. Olek, thanks so much, dude. Um, really thrilled you could join me today. And uh, yeah, we will Thank see you, so you much, guys. all tomorrow. And uh, yeah, bye for now.